How's my garden coming along? It's, it's kind of a little bit uh, overgrown. So this week we talked about the new inventory system. We talked about uh, where the boxes come from that. Here's my garage. I'll show you. I've just basically got nothing going for it so far. But I want to put up shelves like that right there. That's not my Bud Light sign that came with the house. And just, you know, at least store all my excess inventory here so I can clear out the system that I've got going at the warehouse. We talked about some Dollar Tree tips. We talked about, uh, let's see, the DVDs, how to get them gated, and what you can do from thrift stores. Uh, and that's pretty much like a good snippet or cross section of my week. You know, when you are your own boss, your own business owner, you have, <laughs> you have a lot of stuff to do, but to document a few slices of it, I hope that's helpful. And so if you wanna watch this like super cut of all last week's videos, when you list or when you're cleaning or whatever you're doing, maybe it can reinforce those ideas. Hey guys, how you doing? I'm doing good, I'm a little sweaty. It's like 90 degrees out. In the warehouse doing inventory work. What do I mean by inventory work? Well, I mean that up until this point, and still, I do not lose items when I sell them. I know where everything is. I have a good enough memory where I know where everything in my warehouse is. Here's what I don't know. If I were to hire someone or if I were to do it myself to pick up a shelf of things and move it to my garage because I'm trying to downsize and save money, uh, then I would not know what's being moved, right? Like, let's go over here and look. Let's go over here and look. So this stuff right here, I know it's all here. If you say, where's the fire tops right there? You can say, where's, where's the action figures? They're in here. Where's the uh, Pokemon cards? They're in here. Now, if those get moved off that shelf, these boxes look so nondescript and there's no number on them, there's no tags on them, that I don't know what the heck is what if it gets moved. So now, for I never even thought this, I never even imagined that I would need to do inventory not to pick sales, but to move items. Because what happens now is here, box 22. Everything in box 22 is one item. What, that doesn't make any sense. Well, that's not like literally true, but when I sell something and custom SKU 022 pops up, I don't have to go searching for the individual items in here. I don't have to remember where the 25 books are. All I have to do is remember where box 22 is. And like, that's kind of the thing that, it's annoying that it took me so long to learn how to do that, or it's really more annoying that I didn't think into the future that maybe I want some mobility. I was just focusing on like individual sales and not the overall health of my business and how easy it would be to transition to a new location. The same thing is occurring with all my old excess inventory. And so now I have this problem where I either throw away thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars in inventory because I can't find someone to liquidate it to. Nobody wants to buy it. They want to go through and pick out the good stuff. If I'm going to take the time to pick out the good stuff, then I'll sell the good stuff. No one wants just to roll the dice and buy everything. So at this point, I'm just going to throw it all away. I'm going to get a dumpster out here. I'm going to throw it all away because the time it's taking me to think about this and go through it all, I'm not convinced that the, the money's there. I don't know. I mean, there, it's just like, I've forgotten what I've bought. I've forgotten what I've bought. I get fixated on the shiny objects. And it's just like, it's just frustrating. It's frustrating as a business owner to realize that you made mistakes and now you have to go back and fix them and you're fixing them on your time. And that's like the struggles, I guess, of doing this, of being self-employed. So I just want to share with you what's going on. This is like a business vlog. I don't know. There's no promises here to get rich. There's no tips or tricks. Just a realistic look into what it's like to run a business, to make mistakes, to deal with those mistakes, and to go forward. Not be derailed by, you know, just being frustrated, but to actually try and make things better and create better systems, and then to use those systems to make more money. My name is Blake. I hope you got something of value out of this. I would if I was watching it. Uh, subscribe if you're new, give it a big thumbs up, and I'll see you guys later. Hey, how you guys doing? WBK here. The B in that is Blake, which is my name. 
So I made a video yesterday about how I'm updating my inventory system. There's the boxes right there. And I wanted to share kind of a unique, interesting consequence that I found out. And I guess I'm gonna show you right here. I, I you know, covered their names just to be, you know, shed, just to uh, protect their privacy. And so I have 17 orders that I have to ship out today. 17 orders and six of them have this custom label. That custom label is what box they're in. So I've got about 5,000 items listed and I've updated about 600 to 800. I'm not sure the total number exactly, but let's say 15%. Six out of 17 is way more than 15%. So what's happening is I'm getting more sales from my items that I update. Uh, these boxes here are all full of the items and then there's a whole bunch back there, back there. It's kind of a mess here. But the important thing is, is that as I update them, they're getting more interest from buyers, more impressions, more views. And so previously I had thought that the only way to get more views is to end it, sell similar, uh, or run a sale. Let's pick some orders. So uh, Shrek toy in box nine, Dune, first edition, gutter code S9, box 20. Uh, a baseball or softball mitt, box 20. Another book, box four. A lot of stuff in box 20. So box 20 actually happens to be right here. And we're just gonna pull it out. I'll actually put it back on that table. I'm gonna do it with one hand, so hopefully it doesn't all fall. But uh, easy enough. So a Rawlings mitt, some bears, and uh, first edition of Dune. So this book right here sold for 120 bucks plus shipping. These little teddy bears, whoops, there's a tag on there, I don't want it to break off. These teddy bears sold for $25 plus $9.95 shipping. And then the softball mitt down there sold for 25 bucks plus shipping. So right there in that one box, I've already cleared uh, 120, 25, 25, 170 bucks. And that's, part partially you know due to my new uh inventory system and the listing updates here are the other orders just a shrek toy this is a really small one i got this in a bulk buy so i sold it for three bucks plus shipping and then this went to a viewer if you're that viewer thank you sold for 20 bucks plus shipping mario nintendo game boy holder but apparently uh when you just change minor details I'm guessing that that, you know, shows engagement on eBay's end and they want sellers who are engaged and I don't know how far it goes, you know, but maybe it's if you message buyers, maybe if you send out offers, I don't know. Uh, but I am convinced that by going through and updating something as minuscule and like unimportant to buyers from a buyer's end as, um, as custom labels, that you're gonna get more sales and more views. And so just a little tip today, um, packing out orders, shipping out orders. Again, my strategy is four boxes to six boxes a day. Should be done in a few weeks, two weeks, hopefully less than that. Uh, but I I just wanna share like more business vlog stuff with you. Again, WBK here, thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you're with me on your own business journey, and I'll see you guys later. So I gotta ship out about 40, whatnot auctions yeah i did some video games some dvds stuff like that things that got to go in boxes i do a lot of online arbitrage ebay to amazon so i normally have lots of boxes but if i'm doing like 200 ebay auctions that end on like 50 on thursday 50 on friday 50 on saturday 50 on sunday or i did a bunch of whatnot auctions uh i don't have the boxes for that now for bigger boxes, like for golf clubs or VCRs, I buy those online because the in-person price is crazy. I was talking to Josh, Harry Tornado, you might know him as. And I think he told me that they were charging like 35 bucks for a big box. I remember one time I shipped a bicycle and that was like $75 for the box. They were asking for that. I didn't pay that for it, I bought it online. Um, but for small boxes, for like six by six by six boxes or 12 by seven by six. We'll see sizes in a second. Um, you can buy them online or you can buy them at Walmart. And unless you're buying pallets, which I'm not doing right now, I'm just buying, I mean, even caseloads up to like 300. Walmart sells them at essentially the same price when you take into account shipping and all the other stuff you might have to worry about. I think they're loss leaders here at Walmart right now. 
I think they're loss leaders here. So I'm gonna go into this Walmart and I'm gonna show you the things that I buy, the boxes, the supplies I buy, because there's only like four or five, but it is good to know what makes sense to buy here at Walmart uh, and what makes sense to buy online. First, let's see what sports cards they have. I think Prism Football was supposed to come out today, but I either it all got bought or it's not here yet. I think they're overproducing cards. Panini is, but that's just me. This is so weird compared to like a year ago when there were no cards. Now they're just like thrown, <laughs> thrown up like that. You got Prism Draft Picks Baseball, but no, no Prism Football, which I wasn't really expecting. That's not why I came here. So we're in the home office section and it's pretty simple what we're gonna get. Just like three main things. So the bubble wrap, if you need it. Uh, but mostly what I'm packing with now is this. There's a larger one. It costs $9. I have this at my warehouse. It's, um, I think it's 500 sheets. Uh, you can also get this craft paper. Is this it right here? Yeah, this is it. Uh, so it's 220 sheets. I used this for most of my void filler. Bubble wrap, if I'm shipping glass and I want to like stay firm, stay like in a single position, but if I'm just trying to fill up void so it doesn't jangle around in the box, then I'll buy this. And I'll get one, why not, right now. The other thing I'm buying here is these boxes. The brand is, it's like pen and gear, I think. Um, yeah, 68 cents for a six by six by six shipper. And if you buy those in bulk, you're paying like 58 cents, but you also pay shipping. So it kinda, kinda evens out. So I'm gonna pick up probably 10 of these, 10 of these 11 by seven and a half by five and a half, and probably 10 of those. And they're pretty much um, for orders below 300 boxes, I would assume. I don't know, I'm just kinda spitballing there. I think this is gonna be your best bet. So if you're doing, you know, thousands of orders a month, by all means, buy pallets of boxes. But for most people, this is probably your best bet because I think, I may have mentioned this earlier, but I think these are loss leaders for Walmart. I don't think they make much money on these boxes. You can even, I mean, I use the medium boxes too, but for shipping, these three handle, uh, they can handle most things. I'm also generally gonna be buying shipping tape here. It's about 40 cents a roll cheaper online for just like lightweight packing tape. If you're doing large boxes that weigh 20 or 40 pounds, like Amazon FBA uh, shipment boxes, I would use this, like a more expensive, thicker tape. But for just like one pound or two pound boxes, this is gonna be fine. And that's pretty much the extent of what I'm buying at Walmart. Everything else is better to buy online. Thanks for watching. If you're new here, please subscribe. Give it a big thumbs up uh, and don't be a shithead. See you guys later. There's three main ways to make money at Dollar Tree and there it's the store right there. And depending on how much money you have, uh, your interests, your hobbies, it's gonna change depending on who you are. So we're gonna go over what those are because I think for everyone, it makes sense. I'm going in right now to do one of these three things. The first thing is work there. Dollar Tree, it's a growing company. I invest in them. I think that if you believe what I believe, that the economy is going to shit, uh, things that help people save money and help them do things in their own terms are going to be the big, the big winners during a recession. So Dollar Tree, AutoZone, Lowe's, Home Depot, places like that. Uh, and they're going to be expanding. Dollar Trees are expanding. So you can work there if you don't have any money and you have time. What you can also do is sell things from there. So what I'm doing right now is going in partially to buy things from Dollar Tree, DVDs. I have a DVD list, as a lot of you know. Uh, it has the most profitable or the best DVDs there, and you can sell them on Amazon. And if you watch the video about using christianbook.com to sell these Dollar Tree DVDs, you can get them get on Amazon for like 20 or 30 bucks. It's really cheap. So go in there, buy the DVDs. The list is like 25 bucks a month. If you live within driving distance of four or five Dollar Trees, I think it probably makes sense because some of these DVDs sell for like 
five, 10 bucks profit. So you make 20 bucks per trip, you go to five, and that's like on the low end, on the very low end. I'm going in to buy as many as I can. Sometimes I buy 100, sometimes I buy, you know, five or 10. The third way is what I have this camera right here for, and that's making content about Dollar Trees. I have made tons of videos about Dollar Trees. And what I've noticed is that people just like seeing what's in stock. I've made a second, well, it's like my eighth channel at this point. I have another channel on YouTube that you can subscribe to. I'll put in the links below in the comments called Dollar Store Treasure Hunter. All I'm doing is just filming what's in this Dollar Tree. And then we're gonna talk about it on YouTube. We're gonna say, oh, here's the, here's the frozen goods. They've got to eat home style potatoes. People like to know what frozen foods there are. It's kind of a novelty. We have shrimp egg rolls, lobster egg rolls, chicken egg rolls, vegetable egg rolls. And I'm just gonna be chopping up these videos into short SEO, that stands for search engine optimization friendly videos on YouTube. And people are gonna watch that. Uh, I know maybe it's not your thing, but that just goes to show you how many different varieties of content there can be on YouTube. If people go and shop somewhere, they're probably curious what's available in the store. Same goes for here, that people want to know uh, what, what snacks can I get? Maybe I'm going to a movie and I want to get the best snacks I can sneak into the theater so I'm not paying 25 bucks for a bucket of popcorn and six Tic Tacs. You know, people want to know what the deals are. And even sometimes there are special things like right here, spicy ginger pop, blue raspberry craft soda. Like, that's cool. People like that. They want to know what's here. And so just by making this content available, I'm able to monetize my YouTube channel. I'm able to buy DVDs to sell. And I mean, I don't work here, but I invest in Dollar Tree. And that's kind of the same thing. I've made videos with literally millions of views just talking about this stuff. Dollar Tree soap. It changes. They have different seasonal scents. What do they have now? It looks like they've got beach alternative, charcoal and citrus big charcoal push here super degrees are not really a scent but then like down here i mean come on people want to know what's available because sometimes these soaps sell for like ten dollars and even if i'm not making a retail arbitrage video i'm still showing what's available and if someone really loves for example vinegar and lime ajax then they'll find value in that video treasure hunter and i'm gonna go in with this camera right here and just show what they have show what's in stock, what's available, talk about the good deals, talk about what I think sells for more online, just basic stuff. We're gonna chop it up and make tons of content on that channel. Monetize that channel, make money just for shopping. So depending on what your interests are, if you want to retail arbitrage, if you want to just work a job because you have no money and you can just trade your time for cash, or if you want to be a bit more creative, you don't like reselling, it's not your thing. You can make content about not just Dollar Tree, Lowe's, AutoZone. You can do really anything that people have an interest in. And if you can track these prevailing winds of what's going on in the economy, what sectors are growing, what are shrinking, you can be ahead of the curve and make really good content that people care about and just put it on YouTube for free. Get paid from ads, do sponsorships, and then suddenly you found a way to make money in three different ways from that Dollar Tree right there. There's a lot to talk about, one take. Uh, Blake here, thanks for watching. If you're new, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and uh, I'll see you guys later. So you just got ungated in DVDs on Amazon using christianbook.com for 30 bucks. It's amazing. Back when I started, you had to pay $1,000 to use like A-E-N-T to get ungated. Now, 30 bucks, christianbook.com, and you can sell all the DVDs you want with the exception of like, I think Fox is a um, brand gate, but most DVDs. So what do you do now? Well, we're at a Salvation Army, here, right there, in South Lyon, Michigan. Population 12,000, low, you know, semi-population dense. I'd say it's indicative of how most people who watch this channel, where they live. And uh, they sell DVDs here for 50 cents, you know, 53 with tax. And if we can find 10 DVDs that sell for $10, we're gonna make back that initial investment that you would have used to get ungated DVDs on Amazon using christianbook.com. Can I find 10 DVDs here that sell for 10 bucks or more? I don't know, but we're gonna find out. So this is the DVD section we have. Uh, and you can see it's pretty full. And so what we're gonna do now is pull these out. And there's no barcode there. 
and scan that barcode using the Amazon FBA app and see how many we can find that sell for more than $10. Here's our first winner, Urban Legends Bloody Mary has the lowest used prime price of $9.39, but there are several sales that have occurred in the past over $10, so there's one out of 10 down. Okay, here's our second one, the curious case of the campus corpse. This one's kind of cheating because it's gonna be an eBay listing, not an Amazon listing. The Amazon sales rank is really high, 150,000, but there is a sales history on eBay, and it should sell for about 10 bucks. Here's another good one, Dumb and Dumber double <laughs> spelled wrong feature this one there's no used listings on amazon and the lowest new is about 13 bucks so i should be able to get about 11 or 12 dollars this one's a little different it's a new dvd it's a collection of michael moore dvds they want a dollar 99 and it should sell for about 15 bucks so this is totally different uh, madden 17 for xbox 360 this was one of the last years they had Madden for Xbox 360, and so they want $2.99 in the store. But on Amazon, because it's the last year for this system, it sells for about 25 bucks. Here's our next win, Yanni, a tribute DVD. Make sure it's in there. This one sells for about 13 bucks. So that really does help us out in getting back that initial $30 investment. Another awesome winner, Saved by the Bell, double feature. Make sure it's in there. Yeah, it is. This one sells for about $17, so I think at this point we're probably, that's equivalent to seven or six winners. This DVD makes it 100% worth it. So it's uh, How the West Was Fun, and it's discontinued. And on Amazon, this sells for about 50 bucks. and if you can't sell on Amazon, it still goes for about 35 on eBay. So right here, we're paying for the initial ungating fee, if you want to call it that, from ChristianBook.com. I saw these as well. They're three sealed VHS tapes. Maverick with Mel Gibson, Out of Africa, and One My Bride. I'm gonna look them up. Um, sometimes these can go for a lot of money. I don't think any of these are especially rare, but always worth looking up. This is really interesting. So Seth MacFarlane, the creator of Family Guy, among other things, he has a music CD. Uh, the only issue is, you see right there, Universal Republic, that's a brand gate on Amazon. So I have to go home and see if I can get approved for it. But even if I can, it'll sell for about eight or nine bucks on eBay. This has been really great, but just to top it all off, this is $15 for the entire booklet here. And you go through here, and there's a few CDs in the front, but through the, I don't know, first 15 pages, you get the DVDs. And there's about 100 DVDs in here. So for 15 bucks, 100 DVDs, that's 15 cents for a DVD. Uh, and if they sell for even a dollar a piece, that makes it worth it. Okay, so we're back at the warehouse. What I'm doing is going through all the discs. A lot of these are like seasons of discs. I'm gonna do those later. I forgot that one. We're putting them all in these cheap little uh, jewel cases. They're all in mint condition on the back, which is really nice. Uh, that one's not, I guess. But most of them are in mint condition and the scratch is on here. I, I mean, I'll show you what I'll do. I just put them in this machine right here and it's gonna make it uh, all, all nice and new. So what we're doing is putting them in there. I have nine discs here plus that Xbox 360 game. I'm gonna list them on Amazon. I'm using Inventory Lab. So I'll show you how much money I'll make off these. Uh, and if that's more than 30 bucks, and then we'll know, can I make all the money back off my hypothetical ungating through christianbook.com? Or is it more difficult than, you know, than one at a time? Even these discs work in those machines, these double-sided discs. You can't use these on JFJ Easy Pros, but you can use these on ELM Eco Pros. It looks like you can't, but you can. Man, look how nice that is. That's like perfect. Uh, we'll fix this one too. And we're gonna sell them all because even if we sell them uh, for like 50, 50 cents or whatever, it's still gonna be worth it because I paid on average 15 cents for each of these. And then I'll sell this whole case for about 10 bucks on eBay. Really is a, I think it's gonna be a winning ticket. I think we can call it right now. Uh, I spent about 20 bucks on all these DVDs and this one came out of the case. It's from beginning to end and here it is. Sales rank pretty high, uh, almost 100,000. That's my rule. Anything below 100,000 FBing, anything above will go on eBay or just get uh, auctioned off in a lot. 
But here's the price. The uh, MF, there's no FBA listings. MF listings, $78, $64. I'm going to price it at $100. Uh, it's a, a rare import movie. Um, you know, I think it's like a gay movie and it's gay pride month. So that probably has something to do with it. But uh, I spent 20 bucks. This DVD right here, I mean, I'll show you how it works. I'll just put in, uh, we'll put it in $99. It's going to be, whoops. Oh, shoot. I forgot I unplugged my phone. Well, anyways, I'll put in 100 bucks here. I'll add the batch. It'll give me a little sticker. It'll come out like that right here. I'll put it on there. I'll put it in a case. And uh, then we're going to send it off to Amazon on Monday. And, um... Let me see if I can even get out of here and show you the, the total. Yeah, so cumulatively right now, including that Madden disc, we're at $194 profit. We're going to add this on here for probably, what is that, like 75 bucks profit after FBA and fees and everything. And we have all these DVDs still to go through, uh, and these as well, that came out of that um, the, the Bolt case. And I haven't even gone through the there was a there was a bunch of movies these are single disc movies and then there were a bunch of like seasons of tv shows i haven't even gone through yet, those yet so we're definitely profitable i'd estimate that we're gonna make between three and five hundred bucks now that isn't taking into account um the money i paid to buy them i don't use this for accounting so that's just like the profit after fees and shipping and it doesn't take into account any hypothetical um, DVDs you bought to get engated. But I mean, look at this. Like, we're obviously making a lot of money. Uh, can you sell used DVDs and make money on Amazon? Absolutely, you can. Thanks for watching. My name is Blake. Uh, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up if you like this stuff, and uh, I'll see you guys later. So I hope you enjoyed those clips. I hope that, you know, maybe it just creates a little bit of, of uh, structure for you, and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow.